Yeah? Okay, so, um, it is pretty gross. Not only do you have the x's and y's together on the left-hand side, you got them together on the right-hand side, in, nestled inside a function. So we should expect the derivative of this to be really gross, okay? Um, but that also makes it a perfect candidate for implicit differentiation, because the x's and y's are tangled up. So implicit means I don't have to untangle them. Okay, so how does it work? You just take both sides, you differentiate with respect to whatever variable you want. I could differentiate with respect to y, if you like. Um, there's a whole topic in uni, actually, um, called partial differential equations. Um, PDEs, for short. And it, it burnt my brain to bits because the whole idea is that instead of saying, you know, I've got a function and um, I differentiate it, right? It's, you know, it's a function of x. Instead, you've got functions and it's like you've got all these different variables here. Let's chuck a, I don't know, like a sigma or something, okay? So you've got a billion different variables that go into it inputs, which actually makes sense. In real life, outputs tend to happen for all kinds of inputs, like say weather, okay? There's like air pressure and humidity and temperature and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, and then they say, well, you, you can't differentiate it with, with respect to all the variables, you're going to do what? So just pick one, and then instead of using a dash notation, they put it down here. So that means differentiate with respect to x, or differentiate with respect to theta. And this, this confused me so much, get this, uh, university semester is like 13 weeks, right? I got four weeks into the semester before I understood that when they write a theta there, they mean differentiate with respect to theta. So you can imagine how little I comprehended for those first four weeks. But anyway, we're sort of doing the, the same thing here. So I'm going to differentiate with respect to x. Okay. So v on dx, xy, d on dx, so. Okay. Now on the left hand side, I have a product, right? It's just a, so this is just a woof or a an ICSI, okay? <laughs> so it is, right? So uh, you take the second function, y, it's unchanged. You do the second function, now instead of writing x dash, because that looks just like x to the power of 1, I'm going to write the full thing out. So you differentiate the first function, which is d on dx of x. Happy? You do the same thing, reverse order, okay? So uh, first function unchanged, and second function differentiated with respect to x, okay? See, look, it is. It's an X. Anyway, um, I'll leave that left-hand side. I'll simplify it in a second. Now you do the right-hand side, which is chain rule. Okay. So this is sec. When you differentiate sec, you get second tan. Second tan. Okay. Now, sorry, I, I skipped a step um, because it's chain rule. I should probably differentiate the inside first and then the outside. Okay. So the derivative of the inside is x plus y. Okay. So I'm going to differentiate x plus y. That would be my inside derivative, whatever that is. Okay. And then I multiply that by the derivative of the outside, which is sec tan. Sec that and tan that. Okay. Now probably, you should be careful because this looks like I'm differentiating the whole lot, but I'm not. Okay. There's the derivative inside, and this is a total separate thing. Inside, outside. Happy? Alright, now I can start to evaluate some of my derivatives. Over here, I've got y times the derivative of x, which is just 1. Here, I've got x times, and dy and dx is actually what I'm after. So, x dy on dx. Okay? Now, by the way, I try as much as possible to write the derivative second, so that you don't confuse this with um, this, and like, am I differentiating x and y, which is what I did here, which is not what you want to do, you've already done that. So that's why I slap the x on the front. Okay? Here. Again, derivative of x is just 1, and then the derivative of y is dy and dx. Okay? And then you have this long, disgusting thing over here. Uh, yeah. Okay, now, from here, I've done all the differentiating. All I have to do is make dy and dx the subject. That's it. Okay? So in order to do that, Number one, I've got to get this y over here. So I'm just going to say minus y. Okay? And then I've got to get this, this dy and dx times that, I've got to get it on the other side. Okay? So that's what I'll do on this step. I've got x lots of dy on dx. And then how many lots do I have here? I have, take a breath, sec x plus y, tan x plus y, lots of dy on dx. It's gross, but it is. Yeah, sorry, it's minus. Thank you. 
okay? Over on this side, I've got one lot of this left over. That's from this one, and then I've got minus y. So now if I want to do y and dx on its own, I factorize it out. So let me do that here and be a bit cheap. Do y and dx there, do y and dx there, factorize. Okay, so now when I want it on its own, dy on dx, just divide through. Okay, which actually there's, there's a weird kind of symmetry to it. Right? Because you've got x minus sec x plus y tan x plus y, right? And that's very, very similar to what I have here. So I'm just going to snap a minus sign all on the front just so I can write the denominator in the same order, which is y minus this awful headache. Ta da! That's it! Amazing. That's, that's, that's totally going to make it. Um, now, like I said, it looks weird because um, there's all the x and the y's, but that's what you have to expect. That's what implicit does. Um, probably the hardest step was this one. Just making sure you're careful with your product and with your chain rule. That's all. Thanks.